Now we got to talk about the Mauricio Pochettino. Continue talking about the Pochettino situation, him leaving Chelsea, more fallout on that situation. And I'd like to discuss some of the favorites being talked about, being linked to that job. Um, look, it's clear that this ownership group, this football operations, they really don't know what they're doing at Chelsea Football Club. Let's just make that clear out of here. They really have no sort of structure that they're trying to follow. They're compromising on the values of Chelsea. What I mean by that is um, Chelsea has never been a club that worried about the style of football that they played. Yeah, sure, that's cute and all that. And, you know, if they can play attacking football, it's fun. But Chelsea under Roman Abramovich, the number one priority is winning trophies and bringing in a manager that gives you the best chance of doing that, not playing beautiful football. So that's something... Um, that we're compromising our values on hugely. And I'm very, 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 very angry about that. It's not, it's not the way how Chelsea behave and operate. We don't care about playing Pep Guardiola, Manchester City football of this possession-oriented tiki-taka attacking this. No, no. Whenever Jose Mourinho was winning Premier Leagues for them, for us, we didn't care about the style of football we played. When we won a Champions League with Thomas Tuchel, we didn't care about the style of football we played. When we won the Premier League with Antoine Conte, we did not care about the style of football we played. We just cared about lifting the trophies. And that is the... That is the nature of Chelsea Football Club. That is the tradition. That is the history. And these owners have came in and they're trying to change that. And it's very, very frustrating if you're a Chelsea supporter. I'm a Chelsea supporter. But in general, if you're a Chelsea supporter, you should be very, very frustrated by this. Because we, we shouldn't, we, we, we as Chelsea fans, we grew up now watching the best of display of football from our team. We didn't see this ridiculous attacking display but we were fine with it because we want trophies we want Premier leagues we want champions two champions leagues two champions leagues uh, uh uh Mourinho won three Premier leagues Conte won us one Premier league are you kidding me we didn't care about the football that we played we didn't care about none of that so it's very very frustrating what this Chelsea ownership group is doing with the with the requirements that they have for the new manager. Now it's clear why Mauricio Pochettino wanted mutual consent to leave. He wanted more control of the club. He wanted more control of the players that were coming in or the players being sold. He wanted more control of that. While the while the owners and the people up top the board, they wanted to have some sort of philosophy. Let us worry about that and you coach. Well, Whenever y'all are, uh, whenever at the top, it's a bunch of people that know nothing about football that makes mistakes all, countless over and over and over and over and over and over again. I don't really think you're in a position to say, oh yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's let us decide the footballing things and you just coach. They're not really in a position to do that with the amount of failed transfers and mistakes that they've made since coming in with the ridiculous 20-year contracts that they give to unexperienced, uh, unproven players, um, the amount of money that they've spent on positions that's not needed, the amount of players that they, the overflow in the squad, the amount of horrible decisions this club has made since this new ownership group has came in and the audacity that they have to want more, to want all the football control in the club based on, despite the countless mistakes that they made, it's resounding and it's, discord, it's embarrassing. It's honest, it's quite frankly, it's embarrassing for this football club. It's embarrassing. The way that the, the Todd Bowley and Igbali and all that, the way that they have behaved has been a joke. Um, the way Todd Bowley goes on his little conference runs talking about style of play and us improving and all that and all this nonsense. It's all nonsense. That's what it is. It's nonsense. They're horrible owners. They're one of the worst owners in the Premier League. And I'm at the point where I'm saying they're out. Todd Bowley out. And this new ownership group out. Because it's, 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 the, the way that they've behaved is a disgrace. It's a joke. It's an embarrassment. And... And it's very, very frustrating seeing a club that I love just getting ripped and shattered because of some geopolitical activities between two, each, 
uh, Eastern European countries that have nothing to do with Chelsea Football Club. Nothing to do with Chelsea Football Club. Ever since those geopolitical war or whatever that we do, not, we at, on this network shall not go through, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Ever since that happened, it's been a trickle effect to Chelsea getting sanctioned, being forced for Roman Abramovich to sell, to allow, to bringing Todd Bowley to come in to allow this Todd Bowley and their consortium to come in to this disaster that we see. And now Chelsea are finally, th in this past couple of weeks, look like they're building some sort of thing that's looking like an upwards trajectory and they completely ripped it apart because they don't want to take their head out of where the sun doesn't shine. Or because the ownership and the football operations do not want to take their head out of where the sun doesn't shine. Because of that, now this completely falls apart and it's restart from chapter number one all over again next year. Next year, we're screw they're screwed. We're screwed. They're not going to make top four. It's still an experienced squad. It's still a lot of raw players. And it's a new manager that's coming in that having to implement a new system and a new philosophy and new ideas and a new pattern of play and it's just the same thing over and over and over again Enzo Fernandez has been in this club for one and one and a half years and he's about to be on his fifth manager five five are you serious five managers it's been one and a five 1.5 years he's about to be on his fifth manager that's a joke that's a joke and there's no ways of putting it there's no other ways of putting it um look there was multiple long-term rebuilds that Chelsea were trying to go through when they brought in Graham Potter at first and now Pochettino and they're both leaving after a year with, Poch with Graham Potter's case less than a year uh, and um, you know you know there was some good signs this year you know Nicholas Jackson he missed a lot of chances but there were a lot of chances created Cole Palmer, he played brilliant in this game, uh, season, not much in Kunku this season at all, despite him being like the big signing that we're all looking forward to, um, but no qualifying for Champions League, very huge disappointment, but halfway through, if you told me we were potentially getting Europa League football, depending on what happens at Pickup Final, I would have took that. Halfway through the season, I would have took that, I wouldn't have took that at the beginning of the season, but I'll take that now. Um, look, it's a turmoil, it's a mess now. Chelsea have a chance to, now they have to bring in a new manager. Do I trust this new ownership group to get that right? Absolutely not. <laughs> this is, I don't trust, I don't trust Dodd Bowley and this consortium of Begali and all that. You think I trust them um, to get this new manager right? No, but I mean, we'll look, we'll look at the candidates. I mean, we might as well look at the candidates because is a, um, you know, they're out there. So McKenna, the current manager of Ipswich Town, um, he was the first coach to see back-to-back -back promotions from League One to the Premier League since 2012. He took over a team that was really r struggling and it turned into a dominant team. Um, and, they, and they had uh, players with high, in the highest scores in the championship. And... Um, you know he's an option, uh, even though why why will he leave um, a team that he just bring into the Premier League? Why would he do that to join Chelsea so that he doesn't even have say in football operations? Why would he do that? I don't know, but he's an option, I guess. Um, Maresca, he's uh, he's in Manchester City system. I guess this is another sort of Mikel Arteta. He's a U23 coach and assistant manager. Pep Guardiola has groomed him. And then he went to Leicester City's Leicester City, and um, he led the uh, Leicester to the top of the championship. Um, and they, you know, they're back in the Premier League. Yeah, I get, he's an option. Huenes is a manager I kind of like. I'm not gonna lie, I, I really like this manager. He took a team that didn't really have the squad of players to finish second, but he took them up to second in the Bundesliga. Um, what they've done this season has been remarkable. They're in the Champions League for the first time since 2010. Uh, um, the 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 uh, he's very young candidate. He's only 42, but he has experience at the top flight level. He's coached Hoffenheim and Stuttgart, so I could see that. And he plays you know good attacking football, so uh, you know he's a good option. 
um, there's Michael um, who made history at Girona by taking them to the Champions League. He's, um, they play very, very physical, aggressive, high energy, heavy metal system. They want to be always on the front foot. Um, a little bit different than a lot of the Spanish teams that play Tiki Taka. They play very, very aggressive and high intensity, which I like. Uh, and they, uh, and they're most likely they're gonna finish third in the La Liga, um, and they've scored a lot of goals this season, the second most in La Liga, only behind Real Madrid. And um, he also has a good experience at the top levels, so you know, that's a, that's an option for them. And then you know, that's the main guys that's option for them. Now there's some like. Dream scenarios Chelsea fans can forget about, like Thomas Tuchel. Why the hell would he do? Why would he do that, that to himself? Go back to this ownership group. Are you kidding me? Like, why would he do that? I wouldn't wish that upon him. Um, uh, Hansi Flick, you know, sounds like he might be interested. I would like that. I think he's a good manager. But again, you know, even if he does comes in, do you trust this ownership group to start getting their head out of where the sun doesn't shine? Do you? I'm really, really, really frustrated with them. I am Todd Bully out. This ownership group has to go. And I don't care that the fact that they're American and I'm American and all that. And this has nothing to do with them being American. Or it's simple as they, they cannot run football operations. They don't know how to do that. And they don't allow proper guys to come in that know how to run football, run it. Because what we've seen is not how a proper football club should be run. It's been a joke, an absolute joke.